Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Story to Screen podcast, the movie podcast where we review all different sorts of movies, both new and old. I am your host for this episode, Joshua David Ling. Unfortunately, Chris Reyes and I had been having some technical difficulties, and that extended into some personal difficulties the next couple days. I won't get into details. It was just a... uh, just about of uh, too much work, exhaustion, etc. Unfortunately, both he and I have some very sh- slow internet connections uh, where we are currently uh, in our life and geographically. Thank you, AT and T. Roll my eyes. Uh, I want to upgrade, but it doesn't appear that I can at the moment in my location. So I'm looking into other alternatives. Please be patient with us and stand by. But uh, let's go ahead and get into our review of Thor Ragnarok. Now I know what you're thinking. How did this happen? It's a long story. Asgard is dead. Today, tell me. A contender. It's main event time. He's a friend from work. Oh, come on. What you just heard is the trailer for Thor Ragnarok 2017 from Marvel. And here is the synopsis of the film. Thor's world is about to explode. His devious brother Loki has taken over Asgard. The powerful Hela has emerged to steal the throne for herself, and Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe. To escape captivity and save his home from imminent destruction, Thor must first wage a deadly alien contest by defeating his former ally and fellow Avenger, the Incredible Hulk. Obviously, there's a lot more to this movie than just that. That's really just the first act, which, hey, give it to Marvel just putting the first act in the the synopsis instead of the entire thing, right? Uh, That's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about the Marvel movies as of late is they're not giving away too much of the actual story. It they're they're more banking on that you love and know these characters and something big is going to happen. Um, overall, I think that Thor Ragnarok was a very, very exciting film. I think while it might be a favorite of mine, if not my favorite in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, it is not necessarily technically best, uh, from a story and, um, quality, just objective quality as best as we can objectify quality in these movies. Um, I think that it is the most true to uh, the character in many ways, uh, especially the the comic book uh, version of the character, and we'll get into a little bit more of that later. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it is a fun, uh, but also serious and um, 
universe changing uh, story. And I think that anyone who likes the Marvel movies needs to go see this movie. Um, that being said, we'll get into some of our other thoughts on this. Uh, I think this is the most Norse mythology uh, that has been put into any of the Thor films so far. There is a lot of Norse mythology, and what's more, there's a lot of Marvel Norse mythology. Uh, this really feels like the Asgard that you see in the comic books. It's a little bit more Silver age vibe, but not too much. Um, Loki then Thor have a great back and forth during this movie. Of course, they usually do. Uh, and then, of course, Hela being thrown into the mix. Uh, being And this is a spoiler-filled review. Just so, just so uh, you all know, Hela, their sister, their older sister, that is an exciting uh, prospect to begin with. Uh, we deal with the death of Odin and just all sorts of things happening within that Odin son family. Um, and to lasting effect, it, it appears. Um, maybe not Loki's loyalty to Thor, but uh, we'll see how that goes as things move on. And that's one of the things I liked most about this movie. There was so much that was changed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a result of this. Poor is... Th uh, it's poor. <laughs> Thor is permanently injured, um, and he is going to be forever changed by this he does not he no longer has Mjolnir he has these thunder powers which he is beginning to learn to control uh as he is the god of thunder uh and lightning apparently too because that's not technically thunder but yeah so <laughs> um pretty incredible uh the things that he was able to do with his new powers um and his whole uh, and, of course, Asgard being destroyed. So, so, so many things have happened uh, as a result of this. And we were left with a huge cliffhanger regarding Thanos's ship uh, seemingly coming into contact with Thor's uh, escaping Asgard vessel. Um, actually, that was a Skarin vessel that all the Asgard people were on, yes. Um I think it was Skarin. I'm not really sure what that place was called. Let me get to that a little bit. Uh, the place where the battle between the Incredible Hulk and Thor takes place is a very weird Guardians of the Galaxy-esque world ruled by Jeff Goldblum. Would you expect any different? Maybe Christopher Walken. Maybe. Maybe. But Jeff Goldblum, of course, does a great job with the comedy and... A lot of people I know had a lot of issues with the amount of comedy yet again in this Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they, they feel like it's getting too uh, too happy, too crazy. And I just want to say that I really enjoy it as is. I think that there's some comedy that doesn't need to be there that's somewhat shoehorned in. Um, the uh, Particularly things like The Devil's Anus, you know, it's just this stupid uh, sophomoric humor that doesn't really flow out of the characters so much as it's put in there to be uh, sort of a, hey, isn't this weird and wacky? Sort of nudge, nudge to the audience. And I think they can start doing a little bit less of that. It worked really well with Guardians, and it continues to work well with Guardians because everything is just so weird in Guardians. And yes, we were supposed to have a weird time with this one, a weird cosmic time, and we did, but I don't think it was as much needed because this is a Thor film and if you're going to see a Thor film uh, generally you're okay with cosmic things happening um, I think that uh, once again Jeff Goldblum did amazing Valkyrie uh, played by Tessa Thompson was very hilarious as well um, I'm looking forward to maybe seeing more of them at some point in this movie I'm lo looking forward to seeing more of Jeff Goldblum maybe in this cinematic universe, but we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, overall, Thor continues to be uh, one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character. I think um, I, I really like Doctor Strange as well. I think we haven't seen enough of him yet, uh, but Thor is just incredible, and he continues to be the one who has changed the most during this cinematic universe. He continues to evolve as a character and become more and more than he ever was before. Every new adventure, he becomes more than he was before. Maybe not so much Thor the Dark World, but he did a little bit. Um, but this isn't Thor the Dark World review. This is Ragnarok. So 
uh, with that being said, uh, I think that I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. And uh, this has been a solo review of Thor Ragnarok. You can find us uh, on Facebook, Story to Screen Podcast. Go ahead and give us a like there. You can find more of my work at rhymeandspace.com, where I write epic poetry uh, and stories there. And uh, yeah, go ahead and give Chris and I a follow on Facebook too if you're if you're at it. Uh, Chris Reyes, you can find him. He's got a fun surprise look on his face, and uh, you can find mine directly at Facebook.com/slash Joshua David Ling. I'd love to hear from you, and love to hear your feedback. Thank you all so much for listening, and cheers. <laughs>